I would now like to introduce your moderator for today, Julie Graham, Program Director. Julie, you now have the floor. Thank you very much, Nick. Today we have Lou Haggerty, who is the Vice President and Partner of Patients Unlimited Marketing Consultants, PUMC. She has been a member of PUMC's professional consulting staff for more than two decades of the firm's 34-year history. During her tenure at PUMC, Ms. Haggerty has trained thousands of cosmetic and aesthetic staff members throughout the U.S., Canada, and Australia. In person and in her customized online interactive staff trainings, you will see and hear her precise understanding of the wants, needs, and desires of today's aesthetic consumers. You are about to experience an insightful briefing that is only a small example of Ms. Haggerty's rare, down-to-earth style of helping the staff of practices. On behalf of the Aesthetic Practice Association, TAPA, I'm honored to introduce Lou Haggerty. Lou? Thank you very much, Julie, and I uh, welcome all of those participants who are here today. I want to take just a brief moment to explain what these briefings are about. These are being hosted by TAPA at PUMC to give you some general idea of some of the services and the trainings that we can provide to you and your staff to help them to be more effective in the success of your practice. Today's briefing is just 20 minutes. It is not to represent a complete training, but more of an idea to give you some brief, quick pointers on how you can immediately implement some thoughts as we enter this difficult economy. You will be allowed to ask questions at the end as well as during the session, so please feel free to do so. Before we get started, we always have to have a commercial. That's the most important thing. And our commercial today, um, just if you want more detailed and didactic information, we have several ways that you can do that through P1C. You can sign up for one of our personalized full webinar trainings, which last approximately three hours in our specific offices. You can arrange for personalized on-site customized training where we actually come to your office to do the training. Or you can attend one of our regional trainings. And you do note that we have the information about the web uh, location here, and we will provide it again at the end of the session. To get started, I wanted to take an opportunity to provide you some uh, comments that we received from one of our clients who has had an opportunity to implement some ideas to how to overcome this economic downturn. So you're going to listen to an audio of the excerpts of a phone conversation that we had with her, and she's going to give you some ideas of some of the things that she has been able to implement to be more effective during this economic downturn as well as challenges with the weather. We're Hi, my name is Jan Jordan. Oh. I'm an administrator for Lure Laser Center. I here in Seattle, we are facing the same economic downturns that everybody else in the country is doing. And I have spent a lot of time in staff meetings, individual meetings with each and every little team, whether it's clinical, reception, surgical, on what we are going to need to do to close consultations during this economic downturn. I used many of the techniques that I have been taught through the years with PUMC from follow-up of patient consultations when people are calling in um, to doing follow-up before they come in as well as after they come in to have a clear understanding of what they're coming in for. In this economic downturn, what I have found is that we really don't have as many shoppers as we were having. The people who are calling in are strong, good candidates. They want to have this be done. And so my staff has been trained and probably talked until I'm blue in the face about there's no reason not to close a consultation during this economic time. If they're making the effort to come in, they can be closed. So when we were facing on December 18th, and I had 14 cosmetic consultations on my books, we were facing a snowstorm that crippled the Seattle area. I still needed to get those 14 consultations closed. So once again, using the techniques that I learned from QMC, I had to sit back and look at what am I going to need to accomplish that. So I needed to ensure that my staff was all going to be there, and that was an entire staff that could handle any avenue of scheduling, whether there's snow outside or not. 
I had my full clinical crew in here and a full surgical crew as well as the physician. So that the next morning when it did snow, I didn't have to call and tell them, I'm sorry the doctor can't get in, or I'm sorry we can't do that part because I don't have this technician in. I had put all of my staff up in a hotel within walking distance to um, the facility so that I could ensure they would all be there. I then went the extra mile of calling patients personally to let them know that we would be there and able to handle all of their concerns just as we would if there was no snow on the road. We adjusted time schedules for patients to make it be accommodating to what they went and did. And then we went the extra mile with just some warm, fuzzy apple cider, hand warmers, that type of thing, to make it be more of a jovial type atmosphere when they came in because they may have to wait a little bit longer than usual due to the fact that we couldn't follow a strict schedule. But it was a very successful month for us, and we were able to close all 14 of those cases. And I firmly believe it's because we took away the obstacles of what the weather was bringing in as a tragedy and kept up our normal standard of how we would normally close a patient and bring them to fruition of having surgery by the calendar year end. Thank you. Uh, I think the most important thing that was said there was that you keep to your system. The one thing that we find when you have issues of the challenge of weather or the economy, there's a tendency to panic and not focus on what is important. Uh, some concerns that we do hear from some of our clients are, should you push when you know that money is an issue? Um, we, we want to make sure that you understand that, as was said in that audio, that the individuals are coming in because they genuinely want the services. Therefore, you can encourage them because they want it and they're there because they want it. So you're not being pushy when you give individual information on what the benefits are of coming in for the services. Uh, bringing in financing. Obviously now more and more people are looking at financing, hopefully if they can get it. So this is one of the things that you will want to make sure that you offer multiple types of financing so that you can be prepared for any uh, offers or issues that come up. But it is something that you want to think about. Um, questions that we'll cover a little bit is when the phones ring less, what do you do? Again, you're thinking outside of the box. Are there individuals that you haven't called or contacted in a while? So you want to think about that. Meet with your staff and think about some of the things that you can do to ensure that you can continue to see patients during this period. How do you reassure the doctor or the staff? The most important thing that we know you do is have a plan because if you have a plan and everyone knows how you're proceeding, you have a much better opportunity to make sure that you are successful. Now, the three key steps that we're going to discuss this today about how to close services in person during this time. These are not all the steps. These are just some of the key steps to think about. The first is develop a need by reinforcing the goal of the patient. In the previous briefing uh, in December, we discussed the importance of knowing and identifying the goal. In this session, if you know that goal, then you have to develop the need by reinforcing the goal. Second step is to make sure there is a plan to have the service. That means a plan on the part of the patient and a plan on the part of the staff to make sure that this, the services are part of what they're th talking about and thinking about. And last is to review added benefits. Too often people are so focused on the one goal they don't see that there are multiple benefits in having a service. Therefore, it is important for you to help them to be able to focus on the fact that there are added benefits. How are you uh, reinforce the benefits of the goal? The first is to make sure that you have uh, the goal has been reinforced uh, through follow-up before the consultation and after the consultation. Then listen for key words from the patient that says that they, this is something that they want to do. Listen, uh, have examples of others who have had similar goals and desires so that they have something that they can see as an issue. And then inform the doctor or the professional of the goal of the patient. Too often 
the professional or the doctor is not aware of what the goal is, and they may go off on another tangent. So it's important that the individuals uh, that are going to actually perform the service know what the goals of the patients are. Some key words that you want to hear from the patient. One would be them saying, what is my goal? My goal is. That is